Hi! Welcome to the second part of Module 1. In this presentation, we will compare the vertebrae, ribs, and sternum of different domestic animals. As we recall, the vertebral column is divided into five segments, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and caudal vertebrae. Here is a table showing the number of vertebrae per segment. It is important that you familiarize yourself with the vertebral formula. In mammals, there is a constant 7 cervical vertebrae. This is not true in birds as shown here. The number of cervical vertebrae limits the movement of the head. Thus, in the case of birds, they can freely rotate and move their neck as compared to mammals like our domestic animals. In the case of the thoracic vertebrae, normally there are 13 but it varies depending on the species. The horse has the most number as reflected in the actual length of the animal. The pig varies depending on the breed. Some breed of pigs are longer than the other. In birds, the number of thoracic vertebrae is reduced and partly fused in a bone termed as notarium. For the lumbar vertebrae, the number ranges from 6 to 7. Larger animals have 6 while smaller animals have 7. In the case of birds, the lumbar vertebrae is fused with the sacral vertebrae forming the synsacrum. Same with all animals, the sacral vertebrae are fused into a single sacrum. Originally, it ranges from 3 to 5 sacral vertebrae. The caudal vertebrae varies in number depending on the species and depending on the breed within the species as reflected in the formula. Again, it is important for you to know the vertebral formula of each animal being studied. Now let us try to identify the species differences per specific vertebra. Let us begin with the atlas. One of the things that you need to consider is the foramina present. As I recall, aside from the vertebral foramen, there are three major foramina in the atlas. The lateral vertebral foramen, the transverse foramen, and the alar foramen. In dogs, there is no alar foramen. Instead, there is an alar notch as shown here. In cattle, the transverse foramen is absent. Please note the absence of the said foramen at the wing of the atlas of cattle and compare it with that of the horse. The same is true for the atlas of small ruminants like sheep and goats. Speaking of the horse atlas, all the foramina are present in the horse. This is the same with the pig. The lateral vertebral foramen, transverse foramen, and alar foramen are all present. In addition, the pig has a long ventral tubercle which is short in dogs. The second cervical vertebra is the axis or epistrophius. Like the atlas, variation exists among species. Primarily, we can use the dense or the odontoid process as a point structure to identify the species. In dogs, the dense is tooth-like as shown here. In horse and cattle and other ruminants, the dense is spout-shaped as shown here. To differentiate the two, we can compare the spinous processes. In cattle, it is like a rectangular bony plate as shown here, while in horse, it is bifid or there is a cleft splitting the spinous process into two. In the case of the pig, the dense is characteristically like in the dog, but the spinous process is narrow and high projecting caudally as shown here. For the thoracic vertebrae, we can compare them as a whole. In dog, the first spine is the tallest and the spinous processes gradually decrease in length throughout the whole thoracic region. As a review, the most vertically oriented spinous process of the thoracic vertebra is called the anticlinal vertebra. In the case of the dog, the 11th cervical vertebra is the anticlinal. In contrast with the dog, in the horse, the first thoracic vertebra is the shortest. The first four thoracic vertebrae increase in height and become shorter up to the 13th or 14th vertebra. In fact, the first three or four thoracic vertebrae constitute the osseous base for the withers. The T16 is the anticlinal vertebra. In cattle, 
The first three vertebrae increase in height, become progressively shorter up to the 12th to 13th vertebra. The T13 is the anticlinal vertebra. The thoracic vertebra of cattle is characteristically larger than in the horse. In pig, the anticlinal vertebra is the 10th thoracic vertebra. In birds, some of the bones were fused to reduce the weight for flight. One example is the notarium. This bone is composed of the last cervical vertebra and the first three thoracic vertebrae. Here you can see the notarium, and here is the fourth thoracic vertebra. In general, the lumbar vertebrae are the same among domestic animals. They differ mostly in the inclination of the transverse processes. In dogs, the transverse processes are oriented cranioventrally as shown here. The same pattern is observed in pigs. In ruminants like sheep and cattle, as well as in horse, it is horizontally inclined. In birds, the lumbar vertebrae are fused with the sacral vertebrae forming the sacrum. The sacral vertebrae are fused forming a single bone called sacrum. Aside from the number of fused sacral vertebrae, we can compare them based on whether the spinous processes are fused or not. Here are the lateral view of the sacrum of dog, horse, and cattle, and a dorsal view of the pig sacrum. In dogs and horse, the spinous processes are not totally fused. This is in contrast with the ruminants like cattle, sheep, and goat, where the spinous processes are fused forming a median sacral crest. Take note that in some references, dogs have a median sacral crest due to the partial fusion of the spinous processes. In pigs, the spinous processes are replaced by an indistinct crest. The sacral vertebrae of ribs are fused with the lumbar vertebrae forming the sinsacrum. This sinsacrum is itself fused with the ilium of the pelvic bone. In this slide, we can also see the caudal vertebrae of birds. In chicken, there are around 5 to 6 caudal vertebrae. Pygostyle is formed after the fusion of the 4th, 5th, and 6th caudal vertebrae. Now let us compare the ribs of different animals. It is easy to differentiate the ribs based on the appearance of the shaft. In dogs, the shaft is distinctly cylindrical. In pig and in horse, the shaft is narrow. A distinct angle is seen in the pig. In the horse, there is a distinct curve in the dorsal third of the ribs. In ruminants, both of the small and large ruminants, the shaft is wide and flat with a very long neck. In birds, the ribs are much more complicated. There are around 5 to 6 pairs of ribs present. The ribs can be classified as vertebral rib for those attached to the vertebra and a sternal rib for those attached to the sternum. Note that in mammals, each rib has a vertebral and a sternal extremity. At the vertebral rib of the bird, we can see the uncinate process. This provides attachments for the muscles and ligaments and strengthens the thoracic wall. In general, the sternum of herbivores like horses is flat and wide while it is cylindrical like in the ribs of carnivores like cats. It is also important to remember the relationship between the number of rib pairs with the number of sternibrae. Here is a table showing the comparative number of rib pairs, sternal and external ribs, as well as the sternibrae. The number of rib pairs corresponds to the number of thoracic vertebrae. For example, horse has 18 thoracic vertebrae, thus they have a total of 18 rib pairs. The rib pairs can be divided into either sternal or asternal. Please remember that there is always one more pair of sternal ribs than there are sternibrae. As in horse, there are 8 sternal ribs, thus they have 7 sternibrae. This arrangement is true for most domestic animals. In birds, the sternum is well-developed called keel or carina. The wide surface of the keel is shown here 
is used to anchor large flight muscles of the birds. And that concludes our discussion on Part 2 of Module 1. You may now proceed to Part 3 in which we will compare the bones of the thoracic limb of different domestic animals.